Well, good morning, everybody. Behind your masks, and um, for those who are watching at home, returning to recording service just uh, to help those who are struggling at this, at this time and uh, wanting to gently shield themselves. So we come together in this um, third week in our Advent journey. So I'm going to light our Advent. And hopefully, you'll be able to see at least one candle at home. Hopefully the candles will bring out the colour of my eyes. Red. Red, you know, red and bloodshot. <laughs> so let's just be still as we come into God's holy presence. The Lord be with you. And so we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness, and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good and gracious God, grant us a glimpse of your glory that we may rejoice in your presence and abide in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. There is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. 
Let the earth open, that salvation may spring up, and let it cause righteousness to sprout up also. I, the Lord, have created it. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, he is God, who formed the earth and made it, he established it. He did not create it a chaos, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me, a righteous God and a saviour. There is no one besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness, a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, our righteousness and strength. All who were incensed against him shall come to him and be ashamed. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall triumph and glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And we'll remain seated for our Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to await for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to ask you, are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus had just then cured many people of diseases, plagues, and evil spirits, and had given sight to many who were blind. And he answered them, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them, and blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> So um, yesterday afternoon we had Esborne Primary School came in to church for their carol service, um, which is chaotic and uh, noisy, um, and um, had all the elements that you would hope for. So um, we restricted parents this year because of obviously uh, COVID, so uh, reception class do a little nativity cameo, and so um, there is a group of 60 parents who turn up who are so full of love <laughs> and so full of um, passion for their children, that even though they saw them in the morning for breakfast, they will see them again in the evening for tea and spend huge amounts of time with them, they still wave as the child comes down the aisle. It's an amazing moment and uh, it takes me back to moments with Abby and Jen when, you know, the, the immense love. So it, it's a church full of love. It's a church also full of children and energy and life and it's wonderful. And it has those elements. Um, one one of the children came down, and I can't remember what he was. He could have been a sheep, he could have been a donkey, he could have been a wise man, or there was huge amounts of stars and angels, he could have been anything. But it was one of those wonderful moments of humanity for me. He walked down the central aisle of the church for his big moment, picking his nose and eating it. And I thought, <laughs> it, it, kind of, it kind of sums up the whole character of, of these moments. And why these things are important is because we're wedged today between two of the great characters of the Gospel story. Um, on the third Sunday in Advent, we remember John the Baptist, who had immense courage to baptise Jesus. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I am confused by this Gospel reading. It's, you know, John asks, are you the one? I think, I feel fairly confident he knew but it kind of, maybe if he, if he was doubting, maybe it's again, that's something of our humanity. So John has the courage to do something remarkable. He has the courage to speak to the people of Israel, to call them to repentance, but his humanity is also in there. Really, really important. In the same sense that 
we may feel confident in our faith, but at times we have doubts and we have, and I think that's all part of that humanity. We must never lose that. Faith is not about fact and, um, in a sense, having uh, absolute knowledge. Faith is about asking questions and John asks questions. And then this coming Sunday, we remember Mary, who, of all the people in the Bible story, of all the people, in a sense, in the history of our humanity, did something incredibly remarkable in her gentle beauty and her, I mean, crumbs, what a story. And her yes means that we have had salvation um, and the knowledge of God like we would never have had if there hadn't been someone young and beautiful who was prepared. So it's, we're wet between these two characters and we're reminded again of our humanness in the story that is full of humanness. God's willingness, as Isaiah talks about God creating, but in that creation, God's desire and passion that that humanity would respond and find salvation, find life in his creation and in his story. And in the ultimate act of love, God becomes one of us. And once again, it's the human nature which becomes central to this story of divine creation and love. So as we gather this week, we've got to remind ourselves, I think it's really, really important to remind ourselves that we are God's people, created love. We are, we are not without flaws, um, we've just had confession, we're not without our issues. Um, and that young boy picking his nose yesterday reminds us that, um, that humanity is a remarkable thing. And that God even cares about us. What are we? The very creation and love of God. So we thank, we're thankful for John the Baptist, we're thankful for Mary, but we're also thankful for all our stories that keep this place going, that keep faith alive, that and maintain God's wonderful love and the knowledge of that love into the world in which we live. So let us pray. <clears throat> Loving Lord, help us to know that we dwell in you and you are in us. It is you, Lord, that seek out the straying and the lost. You desire to deliver all who are in trouble. You set out to rescue all who are oppressed. You come to us now and seek to bring us home. We rejoice in your presence and your almighty power. May your church share in your healing and saving power. We pray for the church working in areas of violence and rejection in our world. We pray for all Christians who are persecuted for their faith today. We pray for areas of our world where people are devalued and discarded. For all who are outcasts and all who suffer from ethnic violence and prejudice. We pray that the rich and those in authority may bring relief and hope to the poor. We pray for all who are involved in tax collecting and in the use of our taxes. We pray for all who are in the armed forces and for all who maintain peace and order in our world. And Lord, we rejoice that you are with us in our homes Make us sensitive in our dealings with each other, attentive to the needs and desires of our loved ones. We pray for all homes where there is fear and abuse. Mm. And mighty God, you are our strength. We pray for all who are frail and fearful, all who are weary and weak, all who are in pain or suffering hurt. We remember all who are captives to evil and vice. 
and we rejoice with all who have left the troubles of this world and now experience the glorious liberty of the children of God. And we pray for loved ones departing. And Lord, as we prepare ourselves for the great feast of Christmas, we give thanks for our schools. Thank you for Johnny and Emma, our head teachers. We pray for our nursing homes, for Vine House and Birch Trees. And we pray for all those under the care of the Macmillan service here in Esbourne and the local area, but especially, Lord, we thank you for our doctors working so hard with the vaccinations and all involved in Midhouse. And we commit ourselves, Lord, to your wonderful love and your commitment to our humanity. So bless each one of us, bless our three churches, and bless the life that we share. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? Let God's presence and peace in Christ Jesus keep a watch over your heart and mind and free you from being anxious. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Eucharistic Prayer G on page 13. Eucharistic Prayer G on page 13. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood. Gifts from God to his table we bring, we shall remember Jesus. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and with all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory. And we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us, the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple to your glory. And bring us at the last with all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We, every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith and with thanksgiving.
most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come with you. So we say the prayer after communion together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.